I've created an example similar to the one that we saw. It has a few more characters in it than the one in the example. And I'm going to refer to several of them by their position in the list. So character number one is the second dictionary. If I ask the company of character number one, it should say Disney. Uh, if I ask about character zero, that's the first dictionary, and I ask what the name is, it should say Mickey Mouse. Let's go ahead and try that. Indeed, I get Disney, I get Mickey Mouse. The fourth item is Wally. Because each of the items are in a separate row, I can iterate through the list structure of rows going first with the first row, of the character for the first row, then the character for the second row, and so on. So this is another common pattern that we see where we have a, an iterable list of, or an iterable thing, and we use the plural for that. And then as we step through each item in that iterable thing, we use the singular to represent that item. So the entire data structure is information about characters, but each row is about a character, so I'm using the singular there. And as I iterate through each row, then I don't need to include the index number for that row because I'm the iterable item itself is a dictionary. So I can simply ask, what is the name of that character, the company, and so on. So here I've printed off all six of the items that are in my list of dictionaries. I can also, instead of just printing each of the items as I iterate through the list, I can ask a question. So for example, I can have the user type in the name of the character, and then I can check, iterate through the list, and for each one of the rows, check whether the character name that they typed in is the same as the name of the character in that particular row. And if that is true, then it'll do this indented code block and tell me who that particular character works for. Let's go ahead and try that. If I say Daisy Duck, it says character Daisy Duck works for Disney. Let's try it again. Okay, so I typed in a name that's not in this list, and this isn't really that great of a script because when I type in the character's name, if there is no match, it just simply doesn't do anything. And this is even more problematic if I do run the script and I put something like Mickey Mouse in lower case, it also doesn't know what to do with that. So some improvements that I could make, one is I could try to make this case insensitive so that it doesn't matter. The other thing that I can do is to use the if something in something, and that will check to see if the string that I typed is a substring of the string that I'm checking against. Then in that situation, I could just type Mickey. And since Mickey is a part of Mickey Mouse, it would end up showing up as a match. So I've embellished the script in several ways. I've used the lower method here and here to make it case insensitive. I've used the Boolean in test to look for substrings inside another one. And then the third thing that I've done uses a flag where I start off saying that I have not found the character. And then if there is a match, I set the value of the found flag equal to true. If I've looped through all the characters and none of them match, then the value of found is gonna still be false. And I can then ask the question, if it's not found, if the value of found is false, then it's gonna say, I don't know that character. So this handles a situation where the person types in something that's not on my list. So let's go ahead and try this again. So Mickey Mouse works fine. Let's try it again if I don't capitalize. Says he works for Disney. If I just say mouse, 
it says he works for Disney because Mouse is a case insensitive substring of Mickey Mouse. If I say all, it will say they work for Pixar. So one of the things that I've done here is a check for the gender to see if uh, I should use the pronouns um, he, she, or they. If I try a character that doesn't match, it says I don't know that character. 